good morning students students this lesson is of class 10th for the subject of physics topic mechanical energy and its types which is covered in chapter 2 work energy and power and is given on page number 29 of your textbook titled concise physics by selina publications and is being submitted to you on 5th july 2021 so children first of all let us study what is mechanical energy so the definition of mechanical energy is the energy possessed by a body due to its state of rest or of motion so the mechanical energy can be defined as energy possessed by a body due to its state of rest or of motion children mechanical energy is further classified into two forms that is potential energy and kinetic energy so now first we will study potential energy so what is potential energy children this we have done in class 7th also potential and kinetic energy but in this class we will be doing it in more detail so the energy possessed by a body at rest due to its position or size and shape is called its potential energy so the energy possessed by the body which is at rest and it is rest because of its position or size or its shape it is denoted by a symbol of capital u so potential energy is denoted by symbol capital u and it is further classified as gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy so now first of all let us study what is gravitational potential energy children this potential energy possessed by a body due to the force of attraction of earth on it since the name is gravitation that means we will be talking about force of attraction of earth that is force due to gravity so children mathematically gravitational potential energy is given by a formula of mg and h so gravitational potential energy is capital u is m g h where h is the height of the object above the ground level and students if the object is placed at more height more is the height more is the potential energy possessed by the body so now children i am giving you a question you can see figure number 1 given on page number 2 of the pdf sent to you so children if you see figure 1 you can see two objects object a and object b both are of masses 5 kg a is placed at a height of 2 meter while b is placed at a height of 4 meter so children now i am giving you two questions you can pause the video and you can write down the answers in your physics notebook and later on after writing the answers resume the session further to check your answer so first question is which configuration a or b will have more potential energy which will be where you are having more potential energy in case a or case b you also have to give reason for your answer and question number 2 is find the potential energy of both the cases you just calculate the value of potential energy for case a and case b and you can take g as 10 meter per second square 
So now kindly pause the session and write down the answer. Yes, students, I hope you must have got correct answer. So for your first question, we can say that B is at more height as compared to A from the ground level. So from ground, B is placed at a more height as compared to A. So B will have more potential energy. So we can say B is possessing more gravitational potential energy as compared to A. Why? Yes, because B is at more height from the ground. And for finding the potential energy for A and B, we will be using formula MGH. And children, mass is given to us 5 kilogram, G is given to us 10. And for case A, height is 2 meter. For B, it is 4 meter. So substitute the values and you will get answers as for case A, potential energy stored is coming to be how much? C5 into 10 into 2. Yes, excellent. It comes out to be 100 joule. Very good, children. Similarly, for case B, 5 kg mass, 10 is your acceleration due to gravity, while height is 4 meter. So let us put it 4. So your answer comes out to be 200 joule. So I hope you all have got a correct answer. Yes, very good. So let's come to the second type of energy, that is elastic potential energy. Children, you must have taken a spring and you have must have applied force on the spring to elongate it, to stretch it, or to compress the spring. So in that case, the potential energy is stored as in form of elastic potential energy. So children, when an external force is applied on a non-rigid body, the body gets deformed due to change in its size and shape. Children, for example, if you apply force on the spring and stretch it, so external force is the force which you are applying. Non-rigid body is, is the spring is non-rigid. But when you apply, when you elongate it, when you apply more force, you change the actual shape you deform the shape of that object of the spring in this case so but what happens when you when you leave this stretching if you stop applying force what happens the spring will come back in its original shape yes it will come back to its original shape so children when an external force is applied on a non-rigid body its shape is deformed and some work is done by the external form, by the external force in deforming this body. Now this work, which is done to deform the shape of a body, it is stored in the body in form of its elastic potential energy. So you only have to learn the definition of potential energy. So this is the elastic potential energy, which is written in a red color for you people. So children, elastic potential energy is the potential energy possessed by a body in the deformed state due to change in its size and shape. So I'll repeat it again. Elastic potential energy is the potential energy possessed by a body in the deformed state due to change in its size and shape. You also repeat this definition with me. Speak with me. Elastic potential energy is the potential energy possessed by a body in which state? In deformed state. Why? Why it is deformed? Due to change in its size and shape. 
So learn this definition of elastic potential energy. It is very important, children. So now let us see the examples here. Energy stored in a stretched bow. You must have seen the bow in which you are putting an arrow. Yes or no? So if you are having a bow, there is a thread on one side of a bow. You have to stretch this thread so that your arrow can move a longer distance. Similarly, energy stored in a compressed spring is also an example of elastic potential energy. So children, we have done two forms of potential energy, gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy. Now let us learn about kinetic energy. Children, the word kinetic in itself means motion. What do we mean by kinetic? Kinetic means motion. So kinetic energy, what does it mean? It will mean any, any, uh, the energy stored in a body due to its motion. So the word kinetic, the word kinetic means motion. So the kinetic energy means the energy produced due to the motion of a body. Actually, the word kinetic is an adjective. If you just see in English, it is an adjective. And kinetic means produced by motion. So kinetic energy means the energy possessed by a body due to its state of motion is called kinetic energy. Now, children, for example, a fast moving stone has the capacity of breaking a window pane on striking. Now, you must be knowing it. Suppose you are having a pebble and if you place it near the window, it will not be able to crack the window. But if you take the, pe uh, the pebble and throw it with the speed, throw it with the motion, then now it is having which energy? Kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy will be able to break the window pane. So children, let's learn the formula of kinetic energy. It is half multiplied by mass of the body multiplied by square of the velocity of the body. So formula of kinetic energy is half mv square. Children, it is only square of velocity and not the square of mass. We are not doing the square of mass here. So the kinetic energy is half mv square and the SI unit of energy, whether it is kinetic or potential, the SI unit of energy is Joule, J-O-U-L-E. Children, all the types of energy will have SI unit as Joule and each type of energy is a scalar quantity. So whether it is mechanical energy or you can say potential energy and kinetic energy, all such energies are scalar, they are not vectors. Now children, there is a very important relationship between linear momentum, which we did in class nine, and kinetic energy. So children, linear momentum, momentum, the symbol of momentum is small p, and it is written as mass into velocity. We did this, in chapter number three of class ninth, where we studied second law of motion. Law of motion, we did Newton's one law, first law, second law, third law. So in Newton's second law, we discussed about this term, linear momentum. So right now, linear momentum is, just remember the formula of linear momentum, mass into velocity. So what will be the units of momentum? Kg, mass is measured in kilogram. Velocity is measured in meters per second. So the SI unit of momentum is kilogram mass meter per second. So children, we have to find a relationship between kinetic energy, that is half mv square, and 
The other is, I have to find the relation between linear momentum and kinetic energy. That means what is the relation between linear momentum and kinetic energy, how they are related. For that, what we will do? So we just have to multiply the expression of kinetic energy with masses, and then we'll see what is happening, how we are getting till the answer. So what I'll do here is, children, look here. I'll write down kinetic energy. The formula of kinetic energy is half m v square. Now let us multiply the numerator and denominator with same term. This we can do mathematically. We can multiply and divide the numerator with the same term. So here I'm multiplying it with mass. So what is happening here? Can I say 1 by 2m? And instead of this thing can be written, see, m, m multiplied by m, m square multiplied by v square, which can be further written as only m v whole square. Just see. See, if I open the bracket, it will become m square and v square. So I have written the square outside of the bracket such that each term will be taken as a square here. So what is mass into velocity? Mass into velocity is linear momentum. So linear momentum square upon 2m. So what is kinetic energy? Kinetic energy. This is the formula of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is p square by 2m. Is it clear to all? Yes. So p square by 2m is kinetic energy. So this is the relation between kinetic energy and momentum. So k is equal to p square by 2m or you can say linear momentum is equal to square root of square root of 2mk. So now coming to cases, case 1 and case 2. Children, two bodies of unequal masses having same kinetic energy. Now you are having two bodies of unequal masses having same kinetic energy. Masses are different, but kinetic energy is same. That means heavy is the mass, more will be the linear momentum. So more is the mass, more will be the momentum if kinetic energy is constant. And similarly, if kinetic energy is more, but mass is constant, more is the kinetic energy, more will be the linear momentum, again, keeping mass constant. So these are the two case written here. It is just simply depending on the formula. That's it. Linear momentum is directly proportional to square root of mass. Linear momentum is C. Isn't it? See the question. From here, I can say linear momentum is directly proportional to square root of mass and linear momentum is directly proportional to square root of kinetic energy. So I hope this is clear. Yes, now let's move further for work energy theorem. So children, according to work energy theorem, the increase in kinetic energy, the increase in kinetic energy of a moving body, of a moving body. So the increase in kinetic energy of a moving body is always equal to the work done by a force acting in the direction of the moving body. So simply how to learn this formula? According to this theorem, work done is equal to change in kinetic energy. And we have already learned how to learn change. Change means final minus initial. So how to find work done? Work done is equal to final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. So what's the formula of final kinetic energy? Can I say half mv square? And initial kinetic energy is half m. See, I'm putting initial velocity u. So kinetic energy final can be written as half mv square 
while initial kinetic energy children can be given as half m u square so let's take half and m common we are left with v square minus u square so the basic formula which you have to learn for work done is work is equal to change in kinetic energy excellent so now let us learn about the different forms of kinetic energy so children we'll be having three different motion translational rotational and vibration so translational kinetic energy can be explained as the motion of a body in a straight line path is called translational motion and the kinetic energy due to the motion in a straight line is called translational kinetic energy so what is translational kinetic energy the motion of a body in a straight line translation means straight line motion so the motion of a body in a straight line path is called translational motion and the kinetic energy due to motion in a straight line is called translational kinetic energy coming to the next term that is rotational kinetic energy now if a body rotates about an axis the motion is called rotational motion and kinetic energy of body due to rotational motion is called rotational kinetic energy and third is vibrational kinetic energy so if a body moves to and fro about its mean position the motion is called vibrational motion and the kinetic energy of the body due to its vibrational motion is called vibrational kinetic energy so vibration means to and fro motion na so therefore when a body is moving to and fro then the energy possessed by the body will be known as vibrational kinetic energy so children with this i come to an end of this interactive session and you all are required to do the numerical number 1 to 8 in your physics notebook and also go through the theory part of exercise 2b from your physics textbook thank you students have a nice day